in today's session what we will do we will start looking into vmware backup and recovery we will do both also i'll give a, i'll give small overview on how dr works and all okay so imagine we have a main host before we go on implement let's discuss primary data center and dr or secondary data center okay so imagine have one VMware environment, one VMware en environment that has multiple virtual machines. I'm not representing any host or something. You have multiple VMs running on this environment. It's okay. So, how you protect these machines from data loss? If you want to protect these machines from data loss, you need to set up some sort of backup solution here. Okay, backup solution in the sense, you'll have one, one server, okay, that will talk to every other machine within your data center as per the requirement. Okay, and it has backend storage repository. Storage repository, I'll say two types of storage. Two types of storage here. So this one is disk and one is paper <clears throat> and it is connected to both what is this it is also some VM only imagine or a physical server okay most of the cases it will be a physical server and it has a physically connected disk solution and tape solution as well now imagine I'm just outside you have your sand storage right you have your sand storage within the data center only I'm talking about I don't have a space that is the reason why I've drawn underneath so from this sand storage these VMs are running do you agree on this yes okay when you take a snapshot what will happen it will save the snapshot data here it's okay that's the problem if if data store is gone or a machine is corrupted your your data is gone and your snapshot is gone and your machine is also gone along with the data agree on this so how you can protect using some of the backup technology at a specified time frame at a specified time frame means evening after six o'clock till morning six o'clock because business runs in daytime and during during off business hours you will schedule a backup of these machines let's say these machines run at seven o'clock in the evening these eight ten and two o'clock and five o'clock in the morning like this you can schedule they will run automatically who will take care of all these things system will take care of all these things and what it will do it will copy the data from this data stores and it will put it on disk or tape based on your configuration okay most of the most of the advanced 
systems they are not using tapes nowadays so what is the alternate solution similar kind of setup they will have here same disk solution they will adopt here and they'll also have one backup server here. so what happens if, if the system is taking a backup of all these machines and it will save it here okay once backup is saved once the backup is saved it will leisurely replicate the data from here to here for dr purpose dr purpose means imagine if entire site is down still with this data you can simply do a restore and create a machine here obviously it will take some time but you have a data at least so you can create a vms and run the business from here understood are any confusions okay so if you want to note it down you can note it down for backup for backup we have we have a lot of enterprise tools are there one of the tool is one of the tool is where it does net backup you can google it and from vault hp data protector and veeam and what else tsm abamar and so on a lot of tools are there but but what i will do i will have a, some small tool to test called altero it is a similar kind of veeam backup so i will use this to test the backup okay that's one thing and second thing is if you want to keep this if you want to keep the data you need some storage repository right disk systems okay you'll have dell emc data domain or small companies synology nas devices like this you have cheap storage systems this is san this is kind of nas devices and they are very cheap when you compare with san because backup data you are not doing any business you are just keeping the dump you are keeping the dump of production data so no need to worry about fastness and the io ops and all remember these are the two things you need to recollect when you are dealing with backups now how this backup works how this backup works there are two ways there are two ways one is image backup image backup or you will also call it as agent less backup another one is obviously second one is agent based backup what is the difference i'll simply give you an overview so when i'm talking about agent less backup or image backup out of these tools every tool supports both the functionalities nowadays okay and some of these tools will support only agent less backup agent less backup means what you will have a backup server it has some software on it and if you want to take a backup of any other production data any other production server data you need to install client agent on everything you people aware the mcafe mcafe server will be there in the local and what you will do mcafe agent will be deployed in all the systems and what you will do whenever whenever there is a, a new update you will you'll push it from mcafe or sccm what you will do sccm oh, sccm master will be there and you will install sccm agent on all the servers and you will push the patches vivek i guess you know very well yes yes i know yeah similarly similarly if you want to take a backup you will have a backup agent on all the servers and if i say image backup or agent less backup 
let's understand this this is this we are going to test it now let's understand this little in depth okay so imagine we have our ESXi server okay and some of the VMs are there right some of the VMs are there now I said within the same data center I will have one backup server what is the backup server it is also one of the physical server or the virtual server and you will install some software on it once the software is installed what will happen you will connect this ESXi host with this backup server or if you have a vCenter if you have a vCenter you will add whole vCenter into this vCenter and you have a multiple host and number of VMs multiple number of VMs are there so what what you have to do vCenter is there and you can if you have a vCenter you can add a vCenter or else standalone ESXi host and you need to specify where do you want to keep this data where do you want to keep this data so disk pool or tape. ignore the tape no one is using nowadays okay and one more concept is if you want to keep the data into cloud azure cloud azure cloud and you'll have a storage account over here and this data is replicated onto azure okay data will be replicated onto azure for a dr purpose example we are not going to test this Azure backup, but I'm saying possible ways. Now what happens? Every day, every day night, 8 o'clock, this backup will run. 10 o'clock, this backup will run. And 12 to 5, example. So this is how we will schedule the backups. Now, when the when 8 o'clock, when 8 o'clock, when 8 o'clock, what it will do? When the 8 o'clock schedule started, backup server will initiate backup for this particular virtual machine how it will initiate you will add this host into vcenter right oh sorry this backup server right so backup server will give a task to esxi host saying can you please create a snapshot for this vm at eight o'clock understood yes Yesterday's concept. So imagine, imagine file 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 20. We have a lot of files yesterday. We have seen, right? A lot of files are there. Okay. Now imagine when you take a snapshot, when you take a snapshot, there is there are some new set of files system will create that we have seen yesterday. Agree or disagree? yes okay so yes. the customer is, customer is accessing this machine and the data will come and save in this new file, new files do you agree with it yes okay so what when the snapshot has when been the taken snapshot has been taken please be on mute please be on mute 8 pm so from 8 p.m. onwards, the, the customer data or customer is saving some information on his server that will be saved on this newly added Delta files. So what backup server will do now, it will start picking all these files. It will start picking all these files and copy and save it in this disk understood or any confusion hmm? so so what happens if 
this server is of 1 TB 1 TB server total server size is 1 TB so when it is started a backup at 8 o'clock just to copy this 1 TB it took 2 hours for example it took 2 hours to copy the data from from where these files are saved boss under one data store imagine under one data store so from this data store to the backup server repository it took two hours during that two hours what the whatever the data the customer is accessing and saving accessing and saving that will be saved in these delta files once the data copy is finished what it will what it will do backup server will again give an instruction to ESXi host saying I am done with my work I am done with my work please delete the snapshot now what it will do it will consolidate the data onto here and delete the snapshot and server will run as it is customer will never know what is happened on the backend understand the procedure Yes, yes. Okay, this is what happens in the backend. So once the data is here, it will leisurely replicate. It will leisurely replicate to cloud whenever it has some free time. Or you will define the DR schedule. When do you want to replicate? Because if entire site itself is gone. Your servers are gone, your ESX server is gone, your backup server is gone, your disk backup disk is also gone. Then what you will do what by putting all these things into in, in one place? You will lose everything, right? So just to protect that, DR will be used. Okay, skip this part. So now now this is first day. Again, next day, eight o'clock, it will again trigger the backup. And the system will again create a snapshot and again started copying the data during this time it will it will take only incremental copy of the data only incremental copy in the sense already 1 TB data is here and this is also 1 TB in last 24 hours the server data will not become 1, 1 TB to 2 TB or 1 TB to 4 TB right Today, yes. when I took a backup, it's 1 TB. Today, it will not suddenly spike, right? So, there might be 1 or 2 percent data change. From yesterday, 8 o'clock to today, 8 o'clock, there might be 1 or 2 percent data has been changed. So, what it will do, it will start comparing this data and this data. Okay. And if it, there is a logic called CBT, change block tracking block tracking algorithm will work in the back end if you want to google it, it you, you can google it and you can learn some deep dive examples how it works but you understood what I'm trying to explain already 1 TB data is there here also 1 TB data is there it will compare and whatever the data that has been changed since last 24 hours only the changes will be exported to backup server so 1 TB 1% 1 is how much 10 GB how much 10 GB, right? 1%, 2% is 20 GB. Agree? Hello? Yes, yes. Okay, if a 2% data is changed, 20 GB, it will take a backup. Yesterday it took 2 hours, today it took 20 minutes. Okay, fast. So once the backup is done, Again, backup server will be informed to ESX server saying, my task is done, please, please remove the snapshot. And again, it will consolidate the data and delete the snapshot. Because why, why we need to consolidate? Because customer is saving some data, that data is valid. You don't need to ignore it. Because you took a snapshot to, to copy some of the data. Understood? There is no revert concept here ways you need to consolidate okay and the recommendation is if you want to take a snapshot and run the backup or something 
5% of free space must be available in data store. If it is a big server, as I said yesterday, 10% is recommended for big transaction servers like SQL and all. Clear? Just a moment, just a moment. Sorry, man. Yeah. So, what we are discussing? Imagine this setup. If I want to test it in my lab, treat this backup server is one of the VM here itself. Ready? 192, 168, 30 dot 25. The Active Directory server is there now. I will use that as a backup server. And I will install one tiny Linux VM and I will take a backup into here. I will delete and I will restore it back using backup tool. Understood? Clear? Hello? Hello, hello, hello. Audible? Uh, you guys are still there? Yes, yes. Okay, so let's log in and do the stuff. What I said, I have one of the backup tool called. Let me show you. I don't know if I have the tool. Otherwise, I need to download it once again. Yeah, Altero setup is there. This this setup is there, no? Altero. Copy slash 192. Me go inside the console. Let me go inside the console and access my machine. What is the IP? Forget about Wi Fi. This is something different. Okay, 1.20. This is my connection IP so 192 168 1 dot 20 slash C dollar Or not working, it should work. Let's see. Okay, one ninety two one sixty eight one dot twenty. What to do, man? Just <clears throat> just give me one second. Okay, I'll pause the recording and I'll switch the network and I'll copy the data onto it. The file I'll copy into inside the server and then we'll do it. Is that fine? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You you might see that I got disconnected from the network, but I'll be back in within a minute or so. Right? Let me disconnect. You will lose the connectivity. Don't worry. I I'll pause the recording. I copied the file because I have to flip the network. That's the problem. It's okay. So I just copied one of the backup file. This visor, this tool. So I don't require all these files. Let me delete. So this is the backup file I have copied. Treat this server as a backup server. Okay, I'm installing backup software now. Very simple self explanatory backup tool. So you guys can test it easily. It's not a big deal. Meanwhile, meanwhile, what I will do? I will also go to my ESXA server and I have a couple of VMs, right? I have a couple of VMs here. 
but these are big VMs. I don't want to test any of these backups. I want to quickly show you how to backup and how to recover. So let's go with our backup client or backup test client is the VM name and I'll deploy our regular tiny Linux VM. Twenty somewhere. It's okay. Even though I I'll not go. I'm not going to assign any IP or something. Is it still running? Right. So it's okay. So your server is your server is running. I want to take a backup of this server and I will delete entire machine and restore it from backup. Okay, how that works? Let's see. So for the, for that, what is the first step? Install the backup backup software inside the virtual machine. Next, accept. Let's see. It won't take much time. Hardly five minutes to install and a few minutes to com configure. Still installing yeah just wait until this finishes launch the console let's see right. this is simple console Okay, if you have a backup server running in US, you can install the console on your lo local laptop and you can connect. In that case, you have to use remote machine and 35107 three, port must be allowed. In my case, uh, my backup server is running on the local machine itself. Just connect. Okay, that's it. You see? Three simple steps it is suggesting. First, add your host and define where you want to define where you want to store the backup and start the backup. Minimize this, go back to my picture, add your host, server is ready, server is ready, add your host and define where you want to save it and trigger the backup. That's it. Only three simple steps. Let's see. Add your host. What is the host name? You can add a vCenter, you can add a simple ESXi host, and you can add Hyper V host as well. Microsoft Hyper V, VMware Hy ESXi, and VMware vCenter. I'll go to ESXi host. Okay, my lab machine, user friendly name is my lab machine 192.168.1.151 1 is the server name, root is the username. Normally we don't use root, we will create some test user or some backup user. Test connection. This application will go and talk to ESXi host. Yes, connection is successful. Next. Next. That's it. Your host is added and it is now discovering VMs. It, it discovered how many VMs? 10 VMs in your ESXi host. First step is done. If you have a vCenter, you add a whole vCenter here. It will show you all the 64 hosts. And total number of VMs, 1000 or 1500, however. Okay. So, go to backup locations. Now, it is asking for what's where you want to save your backup. You want to save in your local disk or you want to save in a network disk. NAS drive or local drive. I'll put it on local drive. Next, it will ask 
in local drive where you want to i have a local c e f g so i'll i'll say in e drive i'll create a folder called create a folder called backup okay i'll create a folder called backup and i'll put the backup data into that folder finish that's it this is your backup location Offsite location means, as I said, it might be a DR copy. Add offsite location. You have a multiple options for offsite. You have a local offsite physical drive in a DR site. You know the DR site, and you have a IP address and the drive details and all. You can configure over there. And DR site NAS share, or you can connect to cloud, or you can connect to Altero or drive rotation. Drive rotation. I, this is I haven't seen uh, this option earlier, but I'm not sure this one. But this is possible. This is possible. But I'll not put any. I'll not put any DR configuration at the moment in our testing. That's it. Now it is asking for you have your backup location ready. I'll say if my DR location is drive next. an imaginary imaginary sake it is not a dr location by the way it is local server only but the procedure is more of same right this is your dr location but that's not true understood so that's okay now which vm you want to take a backup you simply select and put it here and simply replicate put it here I want to take a backup of this client, okay, to where, to this location, and where you want to replicate, here, save changes. The master encryption key, data encryption for replication, it's okay. Third, backup settings, backup settings, and schedule settings. When you want to run a backup, normally, normally, eight o'clock, ten o'clock, you can create more. You can add a more schedules. Right? It is up to you. So I want to run this backup at eight o'clock. Fine. Drag and drop. Say every day eight o'clock it will run. Now, how long you want to keep these backups? By default, by default, it will keep the backups for two weeks. I'll say no. I want to I want to keep this for one month or six months or one year. Those many days it will keep. No no no. Just keep it for two weeks here. And here I want to keep it for never delete. So on DR side it will never delete. Understood? Save changes. Hello. Yes, yes. Yeah. So save it and then copy settings it's all okay leave, leave the other options encryption cpt yes all these options are there so go to go to backups now we can only run a backup for this machine rest of the machines that they, they i haven't configured right only this this server backup can be taken if i click take backup it will automatically trigger the backup manual manual backup Otherwise, if you leave the system as it is, 8 o'clock it will again trigger the backup. Right? So take a backup. It's initiated. Initiated. Now you see it will create a snapshot here. Showing up. Reconfiguring. Remove, create a snapshot for backup client. Removing a snapshot. Integrity has been checked. And just a moment. Right click. Short 
or manage snapshots you see alter or temporary snapshot do not delete one snapshot has been created and what i have explained other data it is moving to backup server once the data copy is done it will again delete the snapshot you will see once uh, snapshot is created at 1956 after that after some time you will see again snapshot got deleted that means backup is completed let's see It is still running. Let's see what, the, what is the status here. Backup is successful. One minute ago, backup is completed here. Okay. And let me see. The snapshot, snapshot is also gone. Manage snapshots. Snapshot is also deleted. Means backup is completed, man. Okay. If I go back very small machine right so that's why it is not showing up clear so if i if i go here backup is completed how to check this backup backup health monitor you can check it will take some time to verify that's okay so we'll directly try the restore imagine imagine this server is crashed now after the backup this server is crashed so what i will do um, power off why the system is it's much slow Wait. so our machine is completely gone machine is completely gone now you want your machine back because you can recreate the new vm but when you recreate the new vm you will not get your data back right you will lose your data you will you if you recreate the vm you will get the base operating system or some of the configurations but you will lose history historical data from last six months or last one year the server is up and running so you will lose all the data so how to restore go to backup tool go to restore you can restore entire vm restore vm as a clone from where from source next it will show you all the servers so this server backup is completed next it will show you all the images from last three weeks or two weeks whatever the backup that it has taken it will show you all the images now i have only one image because i have taken only one backup okay now where do you want to restore it i want to restore it as a as a new vm new vm from backup is the virtual machine name where do you want to restore my esxi host and where do you want to place it under ssd okay and you disable the network card because your primary server is also running and someone did something inside the server some application is crashed you want to check whether i have the configuration files in yesterday's backup so you, your production server is up and running but you want this new temporary server and if you restore it and power on it will automatically get the same ip your production server will go down for that reason for that reason best practice is disable the nick card restore that's it restore has been initiated come here new vm has been created and it created a snapshot and it's reverting a snapshot and it is restoring if you go to virtual machines see the new virtual machine has been new vm from backup has been restored
someone login go to monitor what happened it's okay back up and restore both are completed this is how it looks like how many backups and how much data it is protected or recent operations and any upcoming backups or backups in next few hours everything will be shown in the dashboard and if you go to machines you will see machine has been created and power on you will see machine is restored server is up and running from backup that's it understood any questions any any questions up to this at least you understood what i'm what i'm trying to explain here what is the difference between yeah. snapshot and what is the difference between snapshot and backup yesterday you people are saying right snapshot is different and backup is different but whatever the backup that you are taking that is 100 percent dependent on snapshot only backend it is running a snapshot if you are taking an image backup means it is 100% dependent on VMware snapshot technology clear yes yes any, any questions mm, no no all right I'll, I'll stop the stop the recording here let's catch up tomorrow for another session